Yeah, yeah. looking ugly. Yeah. Where are you going? Nowhere. Oh. <laughs> we were just talking about the masters in Augusta because I'm wearing. He's shirt. dressing for. The, he's dressing here. But the weather there is supposed to be nice. a little iffy. Yeah. Yeah, the weekend is uh, another front coming through. I think. Oh. It said rain Sample pretty much every day. We with, I think about, Saturday uh, being the worst day. The that's still side. a little bit off. Yeah, because they're much more I get it. Uh, reasonably priced if we go have them built. Uh, agenda. Do we have? Do you sure. Do you need? Do you need one? Do you have I'll, one? I'll make a copy. Oh, for thank you. you. I appreciate Does anybody that. else need a copy? It's on it. So I don't want to make notes on yours. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Thank you, Tim. You look just like that guy with the two dogs I saw yesterday. And you know what? There's a reason I was like, because I'm wearing the same clothes I wore yesterday. Well, see, I didn't go there. <laughs> I was putting it out there. I didn't have to you before you did. He's in the back row. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. And I hope this is recorded on Zoom. No, no, I muted it. You're safe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, we got a ways to go. Yet. It's not too old yet. Thank you, Jerry. Wow. Throwing you under the bus early tonight. Yeah, really. Yeah. Um, everyone well up there? Thank you for the nice message today. Thank oh, yeah. That was, uh, that was great to see those back. See all the bikes in there. There's a lot of people out there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not surprised. Thank you so much. Build it and so they will well. Amen. Mm -hmm. I think That's just the beginning. More, more. Yeah, more. More, more better. That is the official clock. That's the official clock. Okay. That clock Works for is me because that's what my watch says. Yeah. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Okay. We ready to go? Yep. Uh, this is a regular meeting from March, which was delayed uh, until today. Sumner. The other fifth member of the committee, RSVP, that he would be here. Other than that, we've got all five committee members. We have Janet, our uh, staff representative, and our council li liaison, Khalil. We've got a size of what's potentially a sizable agenda. One got shortened, but uh, I'd like to get underway. First thing we got to do is, as always, prove the minutes. The minutes were posted last week. Comments? Anybody have any? As usual, I do. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Janet, That's maybe you can help on this. Under old business, under crosswalks, it talks about, uh, I'll read the paragraph, Matt Carter of the T2 Center of, the U of UD was here to review the crosswalks. Most of the work will be contracted because of the need for thermal plastic, and the priorities for this year are Front Street and Savannah Road, with temporary striping on Third Street, so can you just so I just so I understand. I do have an update on that um, with the you know maintenance and safety issues. So um, Anne Marie did reach out to um, the contractor to see when we can get that started for the the thermal plasting. It's the piece that's on the crosswalks that are brick. Right. I, I really, I really, but I'm the question is the temporary striping on Third Street. So that the 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 city maintenance department will be responsible for striping this the crosswalks on the city streets. Um, what the I'm not going to say the holdup is, but two things: we have to get it on their schedule, and. Right now, we don't have um, like the reflective paint, okay. um, so we either have to get that or just go with the you know non-reflective paint. Okay, has um, hence for temporary. Yeah, Very good. and okay. then um, we need to uh, the maintenance um, and the and city staff need to develop a a re 
a repainting schedule so that we're not trying to do this, the entire city <laughs> you know, every year or every couple of years. So it would be done, you know, one grid would be done one year, another grid would be done another year. So they're not um, fading all at the same okay. time. Fair enough. So that took up some of my report for later. There you go. <laughs> I'm good after that. Any other? No? Uh, make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Motions. <laughs> All in favor? Sorry. Aye. 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 All right, that is done. Now, next we have uh, Mr. Thierry Poiret, who asked for time to make a presentation to us regarding possible second or possible dedicated bike pedestrian crossing of the peninsula. So, Thierry, have at it. Yes. I'm going to try to uh, get this out of my face. All right, so um, this, this really is uh, sort of the first more uh, at this stage because uh, I started working on... on an Excuse me, can you speak into the microphone so that people yeah. online can hear? Thank yeah. you. Okay, so um, I started investigating the, the possibility of uh, the city, or maybe some other administration, but in my mind, it would be the city uh, building some sort of connection which would allow bikers and pedestrians who use uh, the trail, uh, which comes from the uh, state park and goes all the way to the canal and dead ends at the canal, knowing that currently the latest portion of it has been closed. And uh, that same trail, with a different name, I believe, continues on the other side, on the uh, mainland side uh, of, of Lewis. And of course, if you're on bicycle or if you're a pedestrian, as you know, you cannot actually cross the canal at that point. You have to go around. You either take the uh, Freeman Highway Bridge or you go back to the uh, um, uh, bridge over Savannah Road, the uh, drawbridge. And the problem with this is that you know, both of these alternatives are uh, dangerous, uh, for, uh, particularly for bicyclists, because uh, we cannot, bicyclists cannot use the uh, sidewalk uh, on the uh, Savannah Road Bridge. And uh, there is no dedicated uh, bike lane on the uh, Freeman Highway Bridge either. So I thought, okay, well, it seems like an ideal place to have some sort of connectors, which could be a bridge. And uh, later on, somebody brought to my attention that it could also be a tunnel under the water. So I brought this idea to the attention of a council member, Council Member Ritzer is here today, and I uh, said, well, it seems like an interesting idea, and uh, let me uh, run it by uh, the mayor, and we will see what his gut feeling is about it. And um, Mayor Williams came back and said, well, you know, you can, you know, you can see what the feasibility of that is, and uh, uh, maybe you should present your conclusions or your preliminary thoughts, he was not very uh, directive uh, in that respect, to the uh, Pedestrian Bicycle Committee. To which I said, fine, I will do that, but I would like to dig a little bit further because I really didn't have anything to present at that point besides uh, an idea. So we proceeded on that basis. And there were a series of meetings that took place. I will uh, get back to those uh, later if uh, if we have time. But um, all this process led us to the end of uh, January 2023, so about four months later. And at that point, I, I had come to the conclusion that it was impossible to go any further without uh, a more in-depth feasibility study. And uh, the mayor had you know, clearly indicated that at this point, you know, the, the city wanted to rely on outside funding sources, and it 
turned out that uh, after I researched the matter, I came to the uh, opportunity for the city to apply for a RAISE grant, which is, uh, I don't know if, if you are familiar with the RAISE grants now, okay, well so the RAISE grant is a grant program administered by the Department of Transportation, the U.S. Department of Transportation. And uh, they have two types of grants, they have the capital grants, which typically would fund uh, an infrastructure project such as the bridge itself. And then you have uh, grants which can be uh, much more limited in amount and which are uh, dedicated to feasibility studies, basically. And uh, the problem that I found as I started researching this at the end of January is that I saw immediately that there was a deadline, which was February 28th, to submit an application. And so I thought, you know, we had quite a bit of time to work on this, but uh, as it is often the case when you have a, a project, if you may think that you have all the time in the world, but actually a lot of things happen in the meantime, and every day counts. And so I immediately wrote a memo to the mayor and uh, to uh, Council Witzer, well, two people I had been working with, for the past four months to alert them to this opportunity. And uh, I have this memo here, and I will leave it with you. You can enter it in your minutes if you want. But I just want to go to a few of the points because I think it, it contains a lot of you know, useful information on how this particular grant program works. And also, the, uh, it gives an insight into the, uh, the way that the Department of Transportation at the federal level thinks you know, about what is worthy of financing. Um, and so I was, I was writing at the time um, that uh, I felt, having considered the program's evaluation criteria, and I will come back to those in a minute, that the city actually would be able to get what is called a raise planning grant. That's the one, the terms that they use for feasibility studies, a planning grant, but that at this stage there was no way that we could have a capital grant. So I was suggesting that we apply for a planning grant as, few, as, uh, as soon as possible, and I said, Considering the city's lack of in-house capabili capabilities, the planning grant would be used to hire a consulting firm charged with developing a feasibility study. So that's basically what I would offer the city could, could apply for. And then I summarized the various uh, criteria that were uh, evaluated by the Department uh, of Transportation. For each criteria, they give a ratings with, uh, which can be either high or medium or low or even non-responsive. -respons now, there's a lot of competition to get that money. Uh, it is not appropriated by state. Um, the um, Delta, uh, Delaware Department of Transportation has given instructions to uh, their staff to actually uh, apply for all possible grants that they can to get money from that program for all possible projects that they have. And uh, it's obvious that to be, to have your grant approved, you absolutely must have high ratings of on every single of the criteria. If you have a medium rating, you may be able to survive, but if you have one non-responsive rating or one low rating, you might as well not waste your time uh, filing the papers because you're not gonna be approved. And the way the, uh, the, uh, the grants are approved is, is basically a sort of a jury system where the city would present its project to a first level of reviewers, and if you pass that level, then you go to another level of reviewers, and you have to redo your presentation after half the candidates have been eliminated, and then if you pass that second step, you know, go to the next step, and so on. And eventually, you know, the projects that are selected uh, get, uh, get chosen and, and approved. So I wanted to go briefly over the, uh, the criteria uh, because I felt that th the project that I mentioned briefly was actually a very good candidate to, for this type of uh, 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 grant. The, the, 
criteria include, so I'm gonna list them all very quickly, safety, environmental sustainability, quality of life, mobility and connectivity, economic competitiveness and opportunity, uh, state of good repair, partnership and collaboration, and finally, innovation. So I'm gonna take a few seconds for each of them. Safety in, in the application uh, documentation say, it says safety is a primary project purpose and, an and is underlined, uh, the project has clear, direct, and significant benefits that targets a known documented safety problems by, and then there is some verbiage, by protect non-motorized travelers and communities from safety risks. So this one I felt you know, was a no-brainer. It's very obvious that building this connection would actually significantly improve the safety of the bicyclists and the pedestrians by avoiding sending them back to the, uh, to the roadway when they are on, on the trail. The second criteria, environmental sustainability. The application says environmental sustainability is a primary project purpose and the project has clear, direct, significant benefit that explicitly considers climate change and environmental justice. Now, this is sort of a vague thing, but then there is some indication of what they mean by this, which is implement transportation efficient land and land use and design, such as drawing on the features of historic towns and villages that had a mix of land uses, compact and walkable development patterns, accessible green space, and neighborhood centers. So there again, it would not have been, I feel, very difficult to write a, you know, five or six paragraph explaining what Lewis is, the historic district, the green spaces, the connection, the connectivity with the park, the Cape and Lopin Park, etc. Quality of life is criteria number three. Quality of life is a primary project purpose. Definitely it would be. And the project has clear, direct, and significant benefit by, so, improve public health by had adding new facilities. Of course, the bridge would meet the criteria of being a new facility that promotes walking, biking, and other forms of active transportation. So, again, this one was very easy to meet. Criteria number four, mobility and community connectivity, which is defined here as improving system-wide connectivity with access to transit, micro-mobility, and mobility on demand. Now, this, this criteria was a little bit more difficult, but actually we have the chance, or the, the good luck, that the trail serves actually the ferry terminal. And uh, I took, uh, I downloaded some pictures uh, that are on the ferry website where we see that there is actually in the summer a lot of bicyclists and a lot of pedestrians who are coming from the ferry and using that trail to connect, that's the connectivity criteria, to connect to downtown Lewis where they go for shopping, recreations, etc. So there also we, we were very, uh, very well positioned to meet the criteria and have a high rating in this respect. Number five, ec economic competitiveness and opportunity. Uh, there we had to promote, uh, I'm sorry, I have to skip pages, promote economic growth and other broader economic and fiscal benefits. So this is a little bit vague, uh, but I felt that the city could, you know, could uh, come up with some good reason why having this trail and allowing people coming from the ferry and other people coming from out of town who use our trail system would actually benefit the economic activity in the downtown area because most of the people who are not from out of town and come uh, with their bicycles with a ferry for instance or sometimes from the other side of Route 1 end up getting a drink or having lunch in the business district supporting the local business community. Uh, and uh, I suggested here, I said no, to strengthen its application, the city could emphasize that the city council has adopted a resolution making ecotourism and the promotion of health by walking and bicycling a priority with a goal of becoming leader in these fields in the state of Delaware. Now, 
uh, as we know, the city has not adopted such a resolution, but I was uh, basically suggesting if we are going to submit that application, first, you know, the first thing the council is going to do, it's going to adopt that resolution so that we can attach it to our application for a race grant. Well, it never came to that, but I mentioned this because I think this is still a good resolution that your committee could suggest the city council could have because it, I think it remains valid. State of good repair. Well, state of good repair is prioritized improvement of the condition of safety of existing transportation and infrastructure in the, within the existing footprint. There, it's a little bit more difficult for us to get a high rating because really a new bridge doesn't have much to do with the improvement of existing infrastructure. But uh, I think we could certainly come up with language explaining that the, the bridge itself, the new facility, would be well maintained and use examples of how well the city maintains its existing infrastructure, which is the truth, and therefore that the new infrastructure would meet the criteria of being, uh, of being in well, uh, uh, a good state of repair. Number seven, partnership and collaboration. Here, we have to partner with minority business enterprises, minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, and veteran-owned businesses. And I wrote, uh, in its submission, the city will commit that its evaluation of consultants' proposal will prioritize firms with a demonstrated commitment to diversity or that are minority-owned, women-owned businesses or uh, veteran-owned. Um, so again, no problem I felt for us to meet the criteria. And finally, the last one was innovation. Innovative technologies, use of low carbon materials. Well, the bridge, as we had, we had determined, would easily be able to incorporate uh, low carbon materials, recycled materials like the one that I used in the park. So here I felt we had a very good chance and a very short fuse at the same time since uh, the clock was ticking. At that point, uh, we tried to obtain information from the city uh, administration as to whether two of the uh, preconditions were already met. One of them was that to be able to get 100% funding for the uh, feasibility study, uh, it was necessary for the city to be considered as a rural community in other words, a non-urban community in the 2010 census. And as we found out shortly afterwards, indeed, uh, Lewis is considered as a rural community in the 2010 census. The other con condition is that uh, the city needed to be registered into some sort of uh, uh, SAM uh, system, which is called SAM, which is really a grant application system or contractor management system of the federal government. It turns out the city is also in the system. So basically, there were no obstacle. But um, we also found out in the, uh, in the course of uh, this process that the city had a, a contract with the University of Delaware, the Biden Center, to help uh, write grants of that nature. Now, when I had sent this memo to uh, the mayor, I said that if he wanted to pursue uh, this avenue and if he had approval from the city council to pursue this avenue, I would actually immediately go to the pet and bike committee and uh, you know, make this grant writing a collective effort. I felt that we needed just to come up with 20 pages and if you heard you know, the details of what is already uh, outlined here, I don't feel that it was very complicated for us to do. At least we could have given it a try. Um, as it turned out, uh, shortly after uh, uh, we inquired from the city uh, as to whether or not um, it was a rural community uh, under the 2010 census, we got uh, uh, an email, the city got an email which was forwarded uh, from the Biden Center, which we had had absolutely no contact with. 
whatsoever to explain what the concept was or whatever, saying that they felt this was not a good project and that uh, it would not be approved for a raise grant and they were not going to waste their time. Now that's me editorializing, they didn't say that in those terms, but basically they were not going to waste their time writing a grant application for something which has zero, zero chance of success. So. That was, uh, at that point, we were like on the 9th of February. There were only three weeks left. And uh, at that point, you know, I, I talked again with uh, Councilman Richard, and I told him, listen, if, if we're not going to get the cooperation uh, that we need to, to pursue this, and considering how little time we have, uh, I don't see that we can actually submit a grant application by uh, the 28th of February. And uh, what I would suggest is simply that I uh, report to the co uh, committee what I found out, the people that we met during this process with their information, and maybe next year, if the program is still valid, somebody else will want to restart the process <coughs> uh, upstream. Um, Still, we had some, some good meetings uh, during the four months period uh, preceding the uh, grant application debacle. Um, uh, we met with first uh, the Corps of Engineers and more specifically the uh, engineer who is responsible for the maintenance of the canal. Uh, we wanted to hear from him if there were any obstacles that he could see to uh, the city building a bridge over uh, the canal or a tunnel underneath. Uh, and uh, he was, I would say, supportive, but basically said this is not my administration who would be in charge of permitting and approving uh, uh, such a structure. It would be actually the U.S. Coast Guard. So. Uh, and the reason for that is that the bridge can be viewed as an obstacle to navigation and the U.S. Coast Guard is responsible for ensuring that navigation uh, is not impeded on the canal. So uh, I contacted the uh, Coast Guard administration. Uh, that time we, and when I say we, it's me, Council Richard and the mayor, we had a video conference call uh, with uh, the person at the uh, U.S. Coast Guard who would have been responsible for processing an application if we had submitted a, a permit uh, to build something over the canal. That was a very good uh, meeting. We, we learned some interesting uh, facts there. One of the concerns that we had is that we might be uh, required to meet the clearance that is currently available at the uh, Freeman Highway Bridge, which is something like 38 feet, or s I, I don't remember the exact height, but roughly 40 feet, uh, which of course would make the bridge very uh, expensive. And uh, the good news was that the um, Coast Guard told us, no, you don't have a minimum uh, height. There is no uh, requirement, no regulation saying that you have to meet a specific, uh, a specific clearance. The only thing is we will analyze the uh, traffic on the canal and determine you know, if, if there are actually uh, boats that require a certain clearance, and, and that will, will actually determine the height of your, the clearance of your structure. Um, s knowing that uh, there is really no traffic on the canal connecting, you know, the Delaware Bay to the uh, uh, to the Rehoboth Bay, uh, because the on the Rehoboth Bay uh, the uh, navigability is, is very poor because of sanding. And also knowing that we had met with the Corps of Engineers and they had told us that they had no intention of cleaning up and dredging uh, the canal beyond Rehoboth, we felt that uh, the cost uh, could, you know, could be maintained in a re at a reasonable level. And so we proceeded to next step, which is to meet, and that time it was in person, uh, with Jason Hastings, who is the uh, person who's in charge of bridges at Del Dot. And uh, so we had a meeting here, uh, and uh, uh, at that point, I was already aware that we 
probably would have to apply for a raise grant, and I informed the mayor that it would be one of the questions that I would raise during the meeting as to whether uh, DelDoc could help us with uh, the grant application. And uh, so we, that's one of the questions we asked. The meeting with uh, Jason Hastings went very well. It was very friendly. He said, well, the problem is that we are going ourselves going to apply for raise grants, and it's sort of a conflict of interest. You're going to end up competing against Del Dot with this application. So, uh, you know, I wish you good luck. You can certainly file an application, but I cannot really write an application which is going to compete against the one I'm going to write myself. So we didn't get help from that. But he gave us another interesting piece of information. I, we had asked him, you know, what would be his estimate of the cost for the bridge, and that was really kind of a cold shower. Uh, at least for me, I didn't expect it to come so high. He said, well, you should, you should count something between seven and a half and eight million dollars. So that gives you an order of magnitude of what you know, we're looking at. And on that, I, I think I've exceeded my time, so I, I don't want to hold you up. I see that you're, <laughs> you're getting anxious to move on with the rest of your agenda. I, I will leave you with you the, um, uh, the, the um, paper that I sent or that I wrote on, uh, on, on this, and I will also give you the names and phone numbers and uh, email addresses of the people that the mayor, myself, and uh, Council Richard met with. Uh, during the course of this uh, preliminary investigation. It was always intended that uh, this would end up at your committee. I, I was hoping that uh, by the time I would come in front of you, I would have actually a proposal to submit rather than something that was already, uh, at least for this year, dead. And, and that's why I called it a post-mortem uh, initially. But this is actually a patient that uh, may be uh, still possible to, to be revived if, if you so desire. So, good luck. Thank you. Do you, questions? you have any questions? questions. Yeah, two Mary. Minutes, couple questions. Um, yes. When you were considering submitting the raise grant, mm -hmm. did you have a ballpark of an amount of money, not for the construction of the mm -hmm. bridge, for the planning study? I said in, in the email that I sent to, to the mayor, I said, I think we need to apply for at least $400,000. Uh, I thought it could probably be more than more than that, uh, but you know there would have been probably a traffic study to do uh, all the uh, th the idea at that point was simply okay. Le let me rephrase all this. Okay, Th this project cannot really work unless uh, Del Dot agrees to. Uh, put it on, its, on the agenda of its uh, uh, long-term planning for connectivity. And uh, the, beyond the fact that we needed to have a pre-feasibility study done to uh, show that uh, this was not a completely uh, crazy idea, if we had been able to get a raise grant, it would have put the city into a much stronger position vis-a-vis uh, -vis Del, um, uh, Del Dot to say, well, listen, the federal government is funding this pre-feasibility study. Uh, that means that they have recognized the, that it is consistent with the public good, and uh, that would have been one of the arguments that you could have presented to push Del Dot to put the project uh, on, on the, on the long-term plan. As it is, you know, uh, seven to eight million dollars uh, is a tall or order, and uh, uh, so. But anyway, for the feasibility study, I felt that if we asked something like four hundred or five hundred thousand dollars, that was small enough that we could, you know, we could have a chance of, of uh, being approved because we wouldn't be draining uh, the substantial amount of money anyway that was available in the whole program, but also it was not small enough that people would say, well, what can you get you know, for $500,000 these days? You can still get a decent pre-feasibility study for $500,000. So that, that was the concept. It Thank never you. went that far in the discussions. Well, okay. Thank you. Impressive amount of work you put into this. Thanks. Um, a comment, but two questions. One mm -hmm. is the, the ballpark estimate of uh, cost. Um, what um, 
Was there a clearance height that went with that estimate? I, I think uh, I think we were talking of 18 feet. 18. 16 to 18 feet, yeah. And what was? Which really would be the minimum. Right. Uh, there is no assurance that the, the uh, U.S. Coast Guard would actually approve uh, clearance uh, of that nature. Understood. And what was the, you said the, Bi the Biden group? The Biden Center. Center didn't want to take it. What was their justification, what was their value? Um, reason for, for uh, let's see if I, I, I don't want to miss it. I don't, I don't, that, if it's wrong, I don't know. First, we never got any contact with them. Oh. Uh, when I say we, I'm talking of myself or Councilman Ritzert, and I'm sure the mayor didn't have any contact with them either. But we got... Was their response to a feasibility to getting a raise grant or getting the bridge built? No, both? the raise grant. Well, okay. again, since I didn't, no, none of us talked to him, to them. It's very difficult. We, we got the information from the city administration, which, you know, forwarded some some, uh, no, actually didn't forward some email. Some, the, the email was forwarded with, to me, but he, the, the, the uh, city manager said, we had a follow-up call with them late yesterday on the grants, and they were researching for us, that they were researching for us. They do not believe that this would be a strong project for race grant. They believe there are other funding sources that would be better suited for this, but they also believe that we would be in a stronger position to apply for funding after the bicycle master plan is complete. Okay. To which we followed up by asking, who did you talk to? And uh, the response we got is, we met with Matt Harris, Lori Spagnolo, Colin Willard, and Chase Barnes. They believe that there are other funding sources that would ber work better for this. Uh, they also think we would benefit by having the bicycle master plan completed before submitting because it will strengthen the application, uh, which is probably true. The problem is, of course, that it strengthens it, but at the same time, it pushes it back by one year. Um, but in any event, I, I, I'm not sure how they were able to you know, express any type of opinions because they, they didn't ask us for any type of information. Uh, for instance, I, I know for a fact that nobody was aware that we were talking of a structure with a clearance of 16 to 18 feet because the only, there were only three people aware of that, me, the mayor, and Councilman Richard, and nobody disclosed that to anybody else. Uh, actually, I think you're the first uh, people here who, who have this information now. Um, so I, I don't know how they could come up with that conclusion, but the fact is uh, once, uh, once they took that position, and considering that there was so little time, uh, we felt that without cooperation, uh, yep. that wouldn't go anywhere. Thanks, Dave. So, <laughs> Are there any more questions? Uh, I, I just like to say thank you for all your work. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, so it's a great it. And I will, as I said, I will leave you uh, some Yeah, if you would. Yeah. Um, thank you. I think to be technical, we should accept this report. Which is the record. Yeah. For the record and keep it in the back of our mind and at some point when we've got the time to deal with it we might decide to send it up and punt it to the mayor and council can we get copies of it yeah, uh, yeah gonna I send it. no i know you're giving us one i was asking that oh, question oh, oh, oh. more broadly to the mm -hmm. committee yes. could we mm -hmm. all have yeah, copies yeah. not right this moment I, I'm happy to do that right oh gosh <laughs> i can scan it to you right. that's you prefer yes one, one final could, comment yeah. if i could i think i'm going to scan it to the and this is the list of the people with their phone numbers. Uh, on, on the I'm saving trees. Well, because then I just have Thank to scan you. it and yeah. save it. Anyway. So yeah. all, uh, all the documentation he's got, yeah. email it to us, put yep. it in a PDF. Love it. Yep. Uh, on the list I'll of people it. who we talked to, you will see that uh, I have identified Maybe three people as being uh, yeah. people to whom Doesn't we actually like had a conversation a with. Yeah. That is the Corps of Engineer person, the uh, U.S. Coast Guard, and uh, Jason Hastings of Del Dot. We I had telephone conversations and other exchanges by email with a lady called uh, Smith. Uh, I mentioned in the uh, in the documents that I've just uh, handed out that uh, neither the mayor nor uh, Tim Richard had any contact with with her. Uh, she was very, very slow to respond when I explained what we were trying to do, and actually she came back to me finally with, a, with an email after, you know, the, 
the thing was almost you know already over, and a response was more or less the same that uh, the uh, uh, Biden Center had, had given mm -hmm. us, which which is that uh, as far as Delta was concerned, uh, this needed to be first into the uh, their master plan before uh, before they could take any interest in it. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Is it's going to be helpful. Do you need a copy no. of this back? Okay. okay. So I'll keep it and I'll scan it to the committee. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, let us press on. Maintenance safety item review. You did part of it, Janet. I did do part of it. Um, I will, I will, I have to clean up this document a little bit, but I will forward it to everybody once I, <clears throat> my formatting uh, is better. Um, so let's see, um, Chip back in January brought to um, my attention that there was a, a storm grate on Savannah that was damaged. Um, I sent that to BPW on uh, January 31st and that opened up a can of worms with whose responsibility it is. Um, so I just uh, talked with Robin Davis at BPW to ask if he had any updates um, and um, it was between the attorneys for the city and um, I guess Del Dot. So um, I will continue to monitor that. Um, the silent policemen, we got the ROW, the right of way approved. Uh, the city has signed it. It was sent back um, to Deldot, and I'm waiting for the fully executed agreement, and then we will order the silent policemen and get those up. Uh, let's see, February 2nd, um, I had um, an email from Councilman Saliba about potential locations of bike racks down on the beach side um, for the crossovers. And um, I reviewed those locations on February 8th. Um, it was presented at a February 28th committee meeting and the recommendation was to proceed. Um, I think we will be, we did get approval from mayor and council for that um, project. And I think later in the agenda, we'll be discussing um, specific bike racks, which I have additional information on, but we're moving forward with that. Um, we had Sumner brought up on February 28th, I believe it was probably during that special meeting, about additional bike rack locations at Roosevelt Inlet. I um, reviewed those locations on March 1st, so I think we just need to circle back on that and if the committee wants to move forward. Uh, rack locations on Savannah Beach were discussed at the special meeting. Again, I think we need to circle back on additional bike racks on uh, the beach locations. Um, we talked about the brick crosswalks. Sharrows, um, we spoke to Del Dot. They're not doing the Sharrows as I understand it, but I think it's something that we can um, perhaps address through the master plan and ask for recommendations on locations for where they where they would be appropriate. Uh, the maps, um, Bob and I met with the churchmans to talk about a revised layout. Um, we had some issues with, um, not type of paper, but what the local printer can do. So um, this is a, I think 12 by 18. I think everybody kind of liked the, the single page, not the multiple trifold that we currently have. They're working on the layout. Coast to coast can print on this size on matte paper. So that will decrease our costs. So I've gotten back to Bruce Churchman and um, he's working on the, the layout of it and um, then we'll move forward with that. And Second Street bike racks, um, the meter was removed. The bike racks were placed last week. Um, we just have to do a little bit with signage and um, those are all done. I think um, Councilman Ritzert sent a picture to the committee that they were well used today. 
So um, I think that that was a great recommendation by the committee and obviously well needed. Um, the maps, mm -hmm. is there something by 18? I don't remember. I what, think it was 12, 12, 12 by 18. Whatever it is. Right. Do they fold in a way that they fit in the current holders? They, they don't. This would be the best that we could fold them. So we would likely have to order more folders. But I think the consensus folders. of the, yeah. Yeah, the plastic yeah. lens asking what we mean by holders. Where they're placed around the city in right, those the plastic holders, right, holders. Right, 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 plastic right, right, right. things, when people pull them out, their yep, yep, yep. their cost. I looked up; they're, they're relatively the small, no, no, 10, yeah. 10 bucks a pop or something. Yeah. So, so I think it can be folded this way and put in there. But I, I think the consensus from the committee was mm -hmm. the single, yeah. two-sided. So, so that's that's what I have. Anything else? Any other questions? questions? Thank you. Thank you. Chipping away. Uh, <laughs> we're chipping away, right, Chip? The next item is the oh, discussion wait. of the beach rack. And hold, hold on one second. Uh, from, from, what's up? You from, got a question what, for from, what you, from what you said, yeah, just sounds like there's a, an invitation to continue to bring these things to you. Absolutely. Okay. No, what what the discussion was is if if committee members see something. If you can email it to me, I'll put it on the spreadsheet and follow up on it and report on it, you know, if not, well, we meet every other month, so at every meeting, I'll report on it. Yeah, no, please do. Just real quick on the, that sewer grate that I was talking mm -hmm. about, it's at the corner of Dewey and Savannah. It's on Savannah Road, and it's it's it's, I, it's I, dangerous. Yeah, it, so it's So be bad. careful if you are biking, because... You have people turning in the right aid, they're cutting you off and the whole bit, and I almost bought it right there. And it's when I came down and told yep. Janet about it. So and I went up and took a picture of it and sent it to BPW and that Thank opened you. the Pandora's box. Okay, <laughs> yeah. next item regarding the beach bike racks. Uh, Janet covered a lot of the current events, what we need to take action on tonight. We got approval. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. There it is. Okay, mm -hmm. we can. went over it. We got city council approval, and I think it was Sumner. You chased down a guy in Dewey that can make these things. So I went into one of the bike stores, mm -hmm. asked around, and mm -hmm. ended up getting referred to one of the bike mechanics who knows. I mean, it sounds crazy, but who knows the guy that builds all of these bike racks in Bethany Beach and has for years built all of these bike racks, like as well as all of the lifeguard chairs and benches, and I think he does all the boardwalks. And everything. I called him up, talked with him, and you know, I, I said some of these things they're you know they have dimensions. We talked about that, this in the last meeting. You know, they're they're hard for certain kinds of wheels. He said, "Well, we can make them any." dimensions you want and and so to me that was very appealing and I forward it to Janet primarily because one he's a local vendor rather than some far away manufacturer of goods made in China or wherever else um, seemed to me a good a good thing and frankly the price was much more reasonable than what we were considering so I <clears throat> I did talk to him um, and told him that we had locations at this point for four racks that were approved by mayor and council. Um, talked to him about the same thing that you did, Sumner, the, you know, the wheel dimensions and the tires, and he said he can make it any way we need it. Um, he could build four in a day. Um, he could deliver them for an extra fee, or I could um, see what maintenance schedule is and go down and get them. Um, they are, um, you know, treated wood, the salt treated uh, wood. Um, the slats in between are removable, so if there's a need to have one replaced, it's fairly easy. And the cost was budget friendly, yeah. Um, the recycled racks that we have down at Roosevelt Inlet, which we originally had talked about, they're, they're 
$700 plus shipping, and you, we could get three of these for that. Do they? What's the life cycle of them? I don't. I we didn't have that conversation. I don't know if you did, Sumner. No, I mean, I think I think the way to figure that out would be to talk to Bethany and see how long theirs have lasted. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I guess having lived down at the beach, and I'm curious what Khalil thinks about this. This kind of fits with so much of the construction that's going on. I mean, you know, everybody's got, you know, porch pilings and, you know, deck balusters and so on that are made this way. It just seems like it would fit in. It would sort of blend in a little better than... Well, I think that's things. accurate, and I also think that's very mobile as well. Absolutely. Which is important. But particularly on the Bay, on uh, Bayview Avenue where we've discussed that may have to be moved if it's an uh, impediment to some of the uh, some of the cars backing, backing up. Backing out, right. Yeah. And a quick comment on that. I think that since we have some custom ability options here, when we do a rack, we ask for some, get a lot of bikes in, you can make some slots bigger because there aren't that many, you know, like not make them all really wide, and that might be a good uh, right, I th I, thing. By no means am I a designer of these things, but I agree. I think there's a way you could, I mean, you can, probably set up some interval that varies, you yep. know, in a pattern across the width that would allow different bikes to fit nicely. I, I talked about that with Janet and uh, one time we talked about it somewhere. I went down to Bethany, that photo was taken this past Sunday. That's an eight foot rack down in Bethany. We were talking about six footers in, in a lot of places. Um, and right next to it is an older one it's, it's got the weathered, uh, salt-treated look, and uh, I'm, I'm fully supportive. I think because of the, the cost friendliness of it for us to go ahead and get four of them, and you, Janet, is at 220, so we're at 880. Mm -hmm. That's virtually the price of one with the shipping. Right. I think would be a wise move for us to uh, pursue them. What I can add to your life, how long does it last? Question. I have got ground-level decks that have been in the sand at my house on the beach for 23 years and are still there. They're still supporting that. Now, given the given fact that we don't have another regularly scheduled for two mating for two months, I think it would behoove us to make the decision to authorize getting these things, because otherwise, if we gotta wait two months to do it, now we're gonna be into June before they'll ever be set up. Yes. I'm ready to make a motion, but what I would, I would just suggest is that given, I get the impression, I came into this halfway mm -hmm. through this process, given that this seems to be sort of a pilot, we're still trying to figure our way through how this is all gonna work. Um, better to save money at this stage, figure out what works, we can move them around, you know, make adjustments, we can order a different set with different spacings down the line, and still we're ahead cost-wise. Mm -hmm. um, I would move the, however many racks, I don't remember the number of racks, but we, four. We, we get them all, we order them from, I don't remember the gentleman's name, mm -hmm. but, but. I have it. Okay, I've got it too, but. Mr. Yeah. Hogan, can't remember his first name. Oh, yeah. Move. I, I support. Discussion that. or um, second? I second the, mo the motion okay. to move forward. Any discussion? If you need any help in terms of sizing or, uh, or whatever, is somewhere, who's taking the lead on uh, Is Janet, you are? Well, I, well, I will, but what yeah, I'll need to know with. is, um, because that is an eight foot and we talked about six foot, so we might wanna go out and just kind of remeasure those four locations and then make an assessment on which would be the best size for those. Um, and I'll, I'm, go ahead, Chip. Okay. Oh, yeah. no, I mean, I'd be happy to go out with anybody, I'm one or. I'm happy to help with that, one or uh, other. Absolutely, like I said, those, those wickets there are about three and a half inches. They weren't precise. Some might have been three and three eighths, some might have been a shade more. I measured them. So that's the kind of accommodate a vast majority of, of bicycles. And one thing about riding up to the beach too, a lot of people take beach cruisers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which has a fatter tire on it anyway, I mean. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm fully so, supportive of course. So you're good with that slat? If 
we want to try to customize some, I don't have a problem with that, but that slab right there has got a simple, plain look for it, and it's going to accommodate most. A three and a half inch spacing is, is pretty good. So three and a half inch space on the slats. Can you get an electric bike in that? Yeah, that's, that, that right there is the interesting problem, you know, for, you know, by no means do I have this figured out. I'm not an engineer, sorry. But, you know, you add the, the tire width to the rim diameter, you get all sorts of funny things that happen, particularly with the, with the, the base of the triangle, effectively. You know, the, the distance from that bar closest to us on the ground in the center, because that affects how the wheel sets in. Um, but the, the range of tire and wheel sizes that are coming out in the electric bikes, some of them get really wide, like four and five inches. I, I don't know that we should be trying to accommodate them on a regular level, but to what Glenn was suggesting, if you had some way of having a pattern where some of the slats are three inches and some of them are four or five, I, I, I don't know. Um, maybe that's the way to go. Because if you put a wider one on each end, mm -hmm. couldn't then two bikes could use that as well if there right. wasn't something else there. I, I just wonder if we're doing all four and we're getting them cheaper and away they go, whether you want to put some sort of accommodation in them just to see what happens. Mm -hmm. Well, how would you recommend doing the accommodation it, within the slats or just sort of expect that they'll be on the outside? I mean, I, again, that's what the beauty of this. Can we take that off offline and then come up with something that makes yeah. makes sense that allows a couple of slots yeah. for the biggest the biggest uh, tires? I, I agree with Mary. I think just on the ends you have two. Okay. On the ends two or lighter slots. Take, pick two two yeah, just uprights, two I vertical can, uprights, can one over here, one over there. That's like most of the bike racks are anyway. Yep. Somewhere. And I can there. talk to the the um, gentleman that's going to be building them and see what his experience has been with the electric bikes, and he can. I would kind of defer to him. You know, so how, what's the best um, uh, dimensions for accommodating the most variety of bikes? How's that? Anything, Kay. anything else? So a motion has been put out. It's moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Mm. That's carried. So we'll get the bike racks. All right, discussion and action on new bike, or new map. Okay. Mary okay. covered, excuse me, Janet covered. I'm, yep. Yeah. Much of what's going on with the maps, uh, she said we met with them Churchill's on 27 January, and we still haven't got the final graphics. Um, we know some things. Looking at what kind of paper. Again, the situation with these maps is another meeting in two months. Well, we're almost two months. We're a week late now. Do we want to wait until our 23 May meeting? to decide whether we should approve the purchase of these things or should we authorize the purchase of the maps sooner than that? Meaning when we get all the stuff, if Janet, you volunteered to take a look at them and mm -hmm. we'll make some changes, there are still things that'll have to be added. Thoughts? I, I would suggest that we go forward with it mm -hmm. and, and Janet have any uh, just feedback to us or some uh, in terms oh, of when? that we need the full the holders and, and the maps mm -hmm. and, and it, it is sub she should be able to know if she needs other input from us in terms of what specifics I would think I, since we're redesigning the map I'd like to see it but if the idea is that it needs to move forward so that there's maps available is there a way that when the draft comes in, you can make it available here and it's our responsibility to come in and review it so you don't have to do a meeting. But this is a brand new map mm -hmm. that's being redesigned that we haven't really talked about what even needs to be on it and where and all that kind of stuff. I, I think before we print thousands of them, we should have eyes on them. I, I agree with Mary. Okay. But then that would delay until our next meeting, given FOIA, we can't have a public meeting. We can't have a vote. Can we? We can have a special meeting. You could. You could do. Yeah, you could do a, could special have a special meeting. Special meeting strictly for this, or a third option would be, we still have. You could. We could have some more of the old maps printed, to get us through until we get the new maps. 
depends. How quickly do we want to put maps out in the box for the tourists? Could, could we authorize two of us on the, on the group to work with Janet and then review the changes and say, okay, go ahead with that without having, do we really need another meeting to, to do that? Well, it would be a case of authorizing instead of just Janet authorizing. The term we used last go around for the bike racks was working group. Work, work group. Do we even know how much they're going to cost or anything? So how are we authorizing that? We could authorize it with a price limit, make sure it's less than our old ones or, you know. I think, I think probably the best route to go would be to have a very quick special meeting. It would have to be. We've yeah. got two people that aren't comfortable. Right. Yeah. With so, the so once I get so. the um, once I get the layout, and that should not be too far off, um, and then I can go back up to coast to coast and get an estimate on the cost, then I can do we can do a special meeting. And if you can send the drafts out to us in advance, we can make sure we do our homework so it's not a lengthy. They meeting. will be it's out. We've always had them. It's an in and emailable. Mm -hmm. or the graphics of what the maps are going to look like yeah, before they so go to the press. So that'll that'll be there. That way, we'll do our homework before we come, so we'll right. be like, so, so it'll be a very quick meeting. Yeah. Just, just an idea also, because we're supposed to be meeting again with the master pr plan people, so we could probably have both meetings together maybe. Hopefully. They, I mean, we don't have a mm -hmm. date for that yet, but it's, mm -hmm. right. it's, it's got to be But they're probably up, so. going to coincide pretty closely. And if we it's can, just we an can, idea. And um, co coast to coast is is um, they they're pretty quick, so hopefully there won't be a long delay once we get that. All right, pressing on, outdoor or excuse me, outreach events we're considering for next year. Here's the list. Can I can I I'm just sorry, I ahead. one person in the audience was talking to me that there was a question from the audience. Do you want to take that now? Oh, yeah, sorry, I didn't. If you just step up to the microphone and state your name and address. Uh, yes, uh, Bob Mosier. I live at Maritima, which is off Robinsonville Road. And uh, it's near Plantations. It's about a half a mile or yeah, three eighths of a mile from Plantations. Uh, it's a small community. However, up the road, Robinsonville Road, there's a huge Shell Brothers development. And I'm an avid biker. I have an e-bike. I know a lot of people don't, but I do. <laughs> and I've had bike. I've biked for years. Other places. We've been here since uh, Thanksgiving. And it bothers me. Uh, before we moved into our new home, we were here for 19 months. Why? We sold our home in Arlington, Virginia where I biked all the time. There's bike trails all over D.C. and Arlington, which I really enjoyed. I came here and I thought, we were out in Rehoboth, and I got on the bike trail there, and I thought I was in heaven. And I biked everywhere those bike trails took me out and went to Georgetown, and of course, it's still in progress. My question is, I'll get right to the point. I know you guys are busy, and, and ladies. Uh, my question is, are there any plans for Robinsonville Road? I'm in a gulch there. The only way I can get any place that I will not ride a bicycle on Robinsonville Road. Why? It's too narrow. And I've seen people out there, and it makes me wince. I almost stop and yell at them, what are you doing on Robinsonville Road? And a guy was, yesterday, as a matter of fact, was riding, and he was not a young kid. He was riding a, 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 a skateboard <laughs> on there. And you know how <laughs> unusual, it, a bike's one thing, but a skateboard's impossible to control that much, especially for an older person. Anyway, safety, number one. Safety, uh, I know your plan may not even think about Robinsonville Road or plantations. Or yeah. Plantations is one thing. They have sort of a disjointed bike pathway on both sides mm -hmm. of the road. It's a little bit narrow, 
but it's better. Um, Shell is proposing about a thousand units of Robinsonville. You're shaking your head. Yeah, I've yeah. been in there. And when that kicks in, there'll be a lot of bikers. So we're in a we're in a place here where, to me, uh, I'm in a place where I can't really bike. I've I've got a a bike rack on the back of my vehicle. Very un we have one car, my wife and I, and um, that's it. I mean, she's away, uh, she's busy, and I'm tying up the car. So anyway, I just unfortunately, I this attention. may not be. Hopefully, the uh, it could be something you think about. Going well, we can think yeah. about it, but unfortunately, this is probably not the best venue. What for would be the best venue? This committee is solely for the city limits of Lewis. Ah, okay, well, I'm you, out of the city limits. No, it limits would be, I guess, I Delvac is the yeah. one that puts the bike trails everywhere. Where would I talk to uh, Sussex County? Sussex County, we got our county council rep. I don't know if... Mark Schaefer is our council for, rep. Is he is he up Mark Schaefer, he's up if you wanted to give me your contact information, I can connect you. Yeah. Okay, I can give it to you. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So if you would also be willing to share your contact information, there's some folks that um, it's not immediate, but I think there, there are conversations about an Eastern Sussex bicycle master plan. There's a Western Sussex bike master plan in development now. Mm. And, and um, I, there are conversations about in Eastern Sussex, sort of like we've been talking about the city of Lewis bike master plan. Mm -hmm. there, there are some preliminary conversations that have gone on and, and I believe you will see one in the future, and that's not going to put a path out there tomorrow. Oh, no, but no. it, if it's not a plan, then it never happens. And for these developments, when they put those shared use paths out front, right. you you still have gaps. Right. But right. those are the gaps that need to fill in, and there are some means of doing that. So I could send you some information if you would also share your information. Um, I'll just give to all of us. Yeah, tell us what it is. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Okay. You guys can carry on. Okay. Thank you very much for your time. Sure. Of course. I, I just, I just want to say, We're you know, glad you're here. the the initial meeting we had on the master plan for the city. Mm -hmm. uh, your very predicament is something that's in my mind all the time. Uh, it bothers me immensely that people have to put their bikes on cars in order to get to a place where they can start to ride their bike. And I, I know, um, you know, in the conversation, in the presentations made at the meeting with Dell Dot officials, I don't remember who it was, whether it was Jennifer or one of the others, you know, but the idea that you can ride out your door and go where you want to go should be the goal that we carry at every scale. Right? We may not be able to handle Robinsonville Road, but we need to keep these problems in mind for the city of Lewis. Yes. I'm going to just share your email with somebody, whoever it is. Khalil? Go. It, okay. That's okay. We'll, yeah. I'll right. Give it to Khalil. We'll yeah, get it from right him. Down here. Yeah, right. <coughs> Alex. So any, do you want anything, yeah. anything else? I think we can carry on with the yeah. agenda. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for coming. Thank you, Thank you all. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Uh, put out a list. We need to get our plans going for what we want to do outreach-wise this summer. Here's a list of what we did the last year. It was on the it's published on the agenda. A couple items of interest. I was talking to Rebecca Lowe at the library today. They are going to do looping for the library differently this year than they have in the past. It's going to be a month-long event. They're not going to have the one single kickoff day, which is where we always went and sat outside the library with our table giving out stuff. They're, it's going to be kind of a continuous month-long event. Her recommendation and what she would like to see us do is to have a table inside Thank you very much. Thanks that for they could help. publicize as part of their publicity for the Lupin for the library. Meaning, okay, as they're publicizing, they would say, okay, Sir. they would say, okay, on such and such a date, the Lewis Bicycle Pedestrian Committee will be here to talk to you and give you information. We might be able to pair that up. Sir. The Sir. Uh, master plan people. 
were talking about coming out to some of the outreach for us. She was recommending Mondays in June, except one of them, I think the 19th is a Monday. I don't have my calendar. Anybody interested? To be there, just set up the questions. table, put out all our stuff, answer questions, give, give information away. If we, like I said, if we can get the master plan people, they were talking about going to these events with us to collect information and talk to the public. I would love to do it. I have I have conflicts on Monday, probably mornings more than anything else, but I'm happy to explore that. I mean, I love the idea, and I particularly was, was enamored with the idea of being able to be out there with the Dell Dot folks, talking, hearing, all that. Um, was there a specific yeah. one? So you're not suggesting every Monday? She was suggesting, where, well, there, you got your calendar up? Is the 19th a Monday, something like that? Yeah. Uh, 19th. It's June 19th. Yeah, well, 19th, 19th they're closed anyway. Mm -hmm. So okay. she would like us to be there 5th, 12th, and 26th, or as much as we can be. If we could be there a couple times, can, once can, is better can, than nothing. Can we try it like the 5th? Fifth, fifth? And then if somebody comes, maybe we come back again. And, and I'll ask her. Yeah. But she recommended Mondays because that's her busiest day. Monday morning starting at 10 a.m. She said do like 10 to 2 because that's the busiest time. That's the way you get a lot more people passing by you. And you'll be inside and shaded and air-conditioned. <laughs> so Saturday, June 3rd, is National Trails Day. There'll be a lot of publicity nationally about riding your bike and being outside and stuff like that. Maybe if we did it that Monday, we might be able to tag on some of that publicity. The fifth, yeah, well. I could, I could do that on, on the fifth then. see what kind of turnout we get. Hmm. I can do it on the 5th. If I can okay. do the 5th. All right. So what as we're we saying get 10, closer. what is the 10 the Library opens at 10. Okay, it's 10 to what, what, how long are we expecting to do this? We suggested 10 to 2, uh -huh. but things start to spin down after noon or 1, so okay. maybe right, we can get, get the Dell Dot people with us. That, that would be excellent. Well, mm -hmm. that would be good. Okay. So we'll work on that. Definitely the fifth. And I'll ask her if there's flexibility, if we get a lot of people, if we want to try another Monday, and we can deal with that by email at the time. All right, Bike to Work Day is May 19th. The whole month is uh, Bike Safety Month. Mayor Andrew has said he will lead a ride. We're going to do it. I would like to get in touch with him and see exactly what he's planning to do. What day is this again? I'm sorry. Uh, May 19th. Friday. Friday. So we will let. I'm not around now, so. No. I can do it if we do it in the morning. Usually, as it's, it's a bike usually, to work, yeah. usually like usually. 7 30, 8 o'clock in the morning. Right. Yep. And when do Ted did it, we always started at the hmm? liquor store parking lot. Right. Yep. But Andrew doesn't own the liquor store, so. It's <laughs> fair. <laughs> okay, we'll get going on that one. We've been doing farmer's market for years and years and years, one Saturday a month. Last year we did the second Saturday. Previous years it was the first. Anybody have a preference as to which Saturday? First, second, third, fourth. When do they start uh, opening the farmer's market? They're open in May. May. So we'll start. I, I could do the, the second uh, Saturday. Uh, okay. May. I'm unavailable the first Saturday, May or June. So All I can. Right. Why I don't can we just figure then? Anybody got any? Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't expect don't. somebody to know what they're going to do. On yeah, I have Saturday no idea what I'm August. doing tomorrow. My, I, I'll, I'll say that that's something. My, my wife um, is a big volunteer at the market. I'm there a lot of Saturdays. I'm happy to be there whenever I can be. So I'll coordinate with. I can't remember. I got all the emails and advise. Look like you're going to say something. No. 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 Uh, why don't we just stick with planning for the whole summer, the second Saturday, and go from there. And the next one coming up will be in May. 
And like I said, nobody knows what they're going to do the second Saturday of every month all summer. So we got to have some flexibility. People yeah, I'm, I'm aware. It only that takes a couple. May I'm gone. So it only takes there. a couple people. We don't all five of us have to be standing there. So I take it that there's uh, materials, maps. Are there other things? What what else yeah. goes on the table? There's bunch bells. Of, bunch of, of yeah. documentation about a bike okay. safety. There's kids stuff for kids. Okay. Uh, we have bells to give away from time to time. There's stuff. And when we do these attention. things, we should be hopefully there should be some interaction with the uh, assessment that's going on with the planning. Um, well, there'll be QR codes and things like that that you can give yeah, away for people to engage. Yeah, mm -hmm. but we should end up with what I think we can end up with is a QR code on the table mm -hmm. to let them scan it, and we could see how often the Dell Dot folks want to come down mm -hmm. and share I, anything we do outreach wise. We should invite them along because that's what they were talking about Absolutely. getting public Good. input. Absolutely. So, so that brings up, in my mind at least, you know, what is there a way that we can capture what we hear and share it back to Del Dot? You know, basically put a document together each week that says, here are the things that we heard. They're going to give you a QR code for people to take the survey. Okay. okay. So, yeah. But they yeah. want us to encourage them to take right. the survey. The challenge uh, is, is that it is taking the, notes when somebody talks to you, then sitting down and writing down what they said is not yeah. not a problem. The challenge is that they're the consultants that will be coming out to these things. It's not the Dell Dot folks. They, there's consultants, so I think it's going to depend on how often we can get the consultants to come. Yeah, to WRI or WRA or mm -hmm. Rossi, one of those two. Yeah, yeah. yeah how much they have in their contract mm -hmm. to be able to, to be able to, that to they be expressed there. interest in. Yeah public contact so we should let them know uh, okay we got the farmers market and police night out that's usually later in the year do a bike it's rodeo everybody's still yeah. good with that it's usually the when first tuesday of the month so that or first tuesday first tuesday in august so that would be august 1st is that right it's the first tuesday <laughs> yeah because i couldn't I volunteer last year because i had a concert on tuesday <laughs> What? Yeah, no, Tuesday. Yeah, you're right. It's it's August first. Yeah, right. August first. Yeah. So that would be August first at George Smith Park. So I think we can put that on our calendar to plan because we've been doing it. We can get a hold of John Fiore if we want to do another bike rodeo, mm -hmm. and then they brought down the boxes and boxes of helmets to give to kids. All right, we'll plan on that, and I'll get in touch with him on that score. Uh, the suggestion came up last meeting of including the Tuesday concert series, which is close to the trailhead, sort of. It, yeah, it's yeah. at the stage at Stango Park. Right. Um, a lot of people ride their bikes. Um, some people don't even know about the concert, but they're riding by, and they mm -hmm. hear it, and they stop. Um, it's... The series starts Tuesday, June 6th, and it goes through the tw August, um, August 29th, and obviously we're not doing a concert on July 4th, so. show up one or two one Tuesday a month two whatever depends on the concert wow I have a pretty good lineup this okay. year I'm saying what's the timing of the concert um, it's from 7 to 8 30 but people start showing up around 6 5 30 so but the actual music is um, 7 to 8 30 Juneteenth. We've never done that before. It was suggested last year we couldn't put it together. That is 13 June, was it, or something? Uh, 24, 25? 25th. Something. 25th. Oh, it's after yeah. Juneteenth. Okay. Yeah. 25th. 
I am not here. Do we so. want to go to Juneteenth? I think they had a big turnout last year. Mm -hmm. okay. I think they had a nice turnout. I'm not here that right. weekend, but I mean, they when had does a nice it start? What part um, of the day? It's uh, usually around one o'clock mm -hmm. um, and goes till I think five or six. Yeah. Six, yeah. Still six. Um, it was one o'clock last year. Yeah. So I'm going to be. I mean, I'm happy to come back. I might not be able to get there right away. I'm going to be in town because I know I'm going to be at the farmers market that whole morning doing mm -hmm. a bee thing. So I can come back, but it I might, might take me a little while to get back because. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, th I think it's a great idea given what I've heard about. How, bu how busy it, it was. It was very well attended last year. There was a lot of and that was the first. Like food getting yeah. put together when as I was driving out last year. Yeah. Okay. What day is today? Saturday, June 24th. 24th. Oh, 24th. Yes. And then the rain date will be the Sunday. Has anybody got any ideas where, when would be handy for pop up events? You were talking about National Trails Day. Well, but if you're going to do the library on that Monday, Monday that's a lot would, to ask. Be, yeah, yeah, I don't disagree yeah, I don't, with that. Right. Are you talking about events on the trail itself? Depends on where we can set it up. Usually when we do these things, we go steal a couple parking spots at the trailhead by the library, and somebody's always had a pickup truck to kind of hang mm. the banner on. And Something we had talked about at a, an earlier one that I know folks were not supportive of, but I'm going down swinging, <laughs> um, was to do some sort of rides where we encouraged people to go out and do informal raise awareness, first Friday rides, something like that. Um, I guess I just wonder if we're always sitting at a table, we're requiring people to come to us, mm. and just wondered if there might be a more interactive way to engage with folks. So he, here's a thought which might be, sorry, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not following my own Please instructions. Speak into the mic. Right. Um, maybe when you talk about like a first Friday ride or something, I know Lewis Cycle Sports does a lot of rides and um, I think that might be a nice opportunity to see if the co committee could kind of jump on on that ride and just talk about what the committee does and do a little outreach with you know the folks that are riding and and um, you know they always have them sign waivers you have to have a helmet you have to have a light you know so but that might be a nice collaboration with a local business that you know um, supports cycling yeah it, maybe we could engage in the route and stuff like that mm -hmm. because our idea is to get folks out and, and being safe and all that. That's a great idea. Yes. Everybody good with that? Oh, yeah. If you're working with the, cyc the cycle shops, is a, is a, yeah. it makes sense. I'm actually, I'm going in the Lewis Cycle tomorrow. I have to talk about having pedals arranged for my yeah, decrepit yeah, knee yeah. or I'll never ride again. <laughs> uh, I, really, I really like the suggestion that we be doing things besides being at tables. I think we have to get away from tables. I don't disagree. Now, something, I will go talk to Brian tomorrow and send okay. everybody some information, assuming he's working Wednesday. He pro I probably what days he takes off. It takes a weekday, one day and a week off, but. Uh, something I forgot, and I'm glad you brought that up, Mary, because my decrepit brain is going as bad as my knee. Um, one thing uh, Rebecca Lowe talked about, and she thought the committee might be interested in, or committee was, hmm, leading unofficially, not any big deal, during Lupin for the library, leading short rides. Nothing published, if anybody on the committee what she was saying is people will come out and want to do looping, but they don't know where the trails are and they're afraid they might make mm -hmm. the wrong turns. Is there anything any of us mm. or an idea of who would be interested in going out there and leading a ride? It may just be a catch as catch can. Here's somebody from the Lewis Bike Committee. Anybody want to go on a five mile ride so you take them to the ferry terminal and back or to the state park and back or 
You want to go around the bike loop? And, and when is wanna, that? Or is that sometime the in the course month of the month? Of June. So but looping for the library is a whole month of June. People come out, they don't have to register, it's not like it was before. They can come out and register and then go looping and do whatever. I never took the ride. I'm not exactly sure how it works. They go so many miles and I'm not I'm not an authority. But there is a possibility with in conjunction with looping for the library to lead some Catch as catch can, long, short, medium rides, whatever, whatever you want to do, and whatever the group that you happen to hook up with. It's very, so, very vague, nothing definitive. So, if we're going to go to the library on a day, mm -hmm. can we like test the water, waters or I ask probably. people if they would be interested in something like that rather mm -hmm. than plan an event that we wouldn't have people at? Mm -hmm. So, that would, that would be my, my thought. Um, that when we go to the library on that first Monday, we yeah, can I will discuss that w with, with people that come by or else. I mean, when we, mm -hmm. we would, uh, otherwise, I'll we would publicize if there's going to be a ride this time at this point. That's I don't think that's what Lupin wanted. They just right. want people to come in and ride, do their <laughs> their ride. I don't think they wanted any organized ride. Well, maybe when but we go, like go in and do the library yeah. thing, we can sit, we can I will become ready to take people and do a ride. I will so talk to Rebecca about what our plans are and take her temperature, see how that kind of thing might work. So, uh, Janet, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm. If we wanted to organize a ride, informal, whatever it is, but we were going to advertise it and say, meet us at the corner of X and X at such and such, does the city have issues relative to liability, et cetera, that there would be waivers, et cetera, that you would need. I'm, I'm trying to find out from the city standpoint, right. if we are a city committee and we're gonna say, come, let's go play, are there kind of rules and regs that would it, surround that? It might be, depending on what we do, it might, and I can talk to um, Ellen Lorraine about this, but it might just be covered under the city's regular insurance writer. Mm -hmm. I think that it's always good practice that you know we go over safety um, and you know perhaps draw up a waiver of liability. You know that they sign. Right. That's um, why I'm asking. Yeah. I know that our insurance coverage that we have in our organization covers folks, but we still have a waiver that right. we have folks sign right. for every ride or walk or anything. And I, yeah. you know, I, I would talk with um, Ellen Lorraine and, and, and we would obviously consult with, with uh, Glenn, the city solicitor, so that we were covered. But it would be, I mean, that would be a very interesting way to get, you know, people out, learn about bike safety, learn about the trails. I'm just asking that because it, partnering with folks is great, but we're we're not really raising awareness for us because it's whoever is the partner is really mm. raising awareness, and then we're coming in to kind of join them. And if one of our goals for the next year is to really raise awareness for this committee and hopefully fill those chairs mm. with folks from the community who want to engage we may need to do something ourselves to do that versus mm -hmm. just being uh -huh. a partner in something else. So. That's a good, yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, Lewis, Lewis Cycle Sports and Lupin for the library, you, you sign waivers for all the rides. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's, mm -hmm. right. Uh, to me, it's just, uh, I think we, we have to. I, th I think that's a great observation, Mary, and, and I don't think it's something that's completely out of the realm for, for the city or the, the committee to do. Thanks, I appreciate that. So you said, maybe I've got the wrong person, but <clears throat> I went to the public, arts, the public art committee meeting um, a while back, mm -hmm. Heidi Lowe ran the meeting, and there were all sorts of interesting ideas. You were there, right? Yeah, yeah. it was it was the, um, it was a public workshop um, she opened it up because she wanted it wasn't a regularly scheduled meeting. Um, it was a workshop to kind of brainstorm and get ideas from folks, and it was. Um, 
it was really it was interesting there, there was, was a, a lot, lot of really, really good ideas there was a lot of really positive energy in the room mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm sorry I hope nobody else takes offense by this but it was actually the most positive meeting I've ever attended at the Rollins Center those meetings tend uh, to be a little on the dry side right a little a little tense but have you been built to Parks and Rec yet? no I haven't All right, um, he's but there. but but, uh, but what I want I, I want to build on what need CPR on that side of the table. <laughs> so building on what Mary was saying, um, there were a number of points, and I can't remember all of them, but there were a number of points where there were people imagining ways of using art as a way of drawing people through the city. And there was a bit of a discussion about art along the trails. And you know, building on what Mary just said, you know, the routes that we might craft could very well help. I think there's an opportunity for, um, you know, a partnership with the Public Art Committee to explore ways of developing pathways that move around the city in sort of creative ways that allow us to really appreciate all the assets of the city, yeah, whether they be loop, scenic or historic or mm -hmm. artistic or what, whatever. Um, so anyway, I, I was really yeah. excited by that. Good ideas. One other quick point is uh, a lot of these outreach events we do, giving away bells has always been a big ticket item mm -hmm. for us. And in my recollection, I think we have about 70 in the attic. So if we're going to do this many outreach events and we need to think about purchasing more bells to hand out. Well, is that a motion? <laughs> if you would like one, uh, I make a motion that we purchase more bells to hand out at our outreach events. How long does it take to get them? I can't answer that. I don't know. I don't know. I've never ordered them. I second the motion. I think that's the biggest. That's the biggest giveaway that people are <laughs> to it get, make the kids happy. You give a, a kid bell a bell and they're smiling all the yes. way. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Can we have Lewis Bike and Pedestrian Committee put on the bell? It's an ask. <laughs> I'll ask. Possible. We'd have to yeah. go through some um, promotional <laughs> stuff. We. Otherwise, is it, is it basically the maker of the bell? I mean, how does that work? Yeah, they're we're brand new out of a box. Okay. Yeah, what we're, we've gotten them before that I know of is, is again, Brian up at Lewis Cycle has passed them through to us at cost, at his cost for the bells. He got right. Trek to give to donate a bunch of them for us. Okay. So if we want to research some you know, promotional goods well, no, it was just an it's idea. A, you don't have thought. to if they're free. Yeah. They're no, yeah, no, but I think yeah. it's mm -hmm. it's worth you know it's worth looking at worth what what's it going to take to make a sticker, you know, that we can just put on top of the bell. Remember the QR code. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Just thinking, putting putting the QR code on the bell, everything will. <laughs> Mary, I have cleared my mind of that. You've left that. Yes. Put that back there. I put that. I put that away. I put that in the attic box. Never to return again. Oh. All right. Back to the. So much for that. Back to this fun stuff. We were all at the May, was it March 20th meeting when the uh, Dell Dot planners and the two consultants were here. Is somebody watching for me to see if anybody's Zooming and um, asking anything? There, I've been I checking can't. the comments periodically. Um, the only people that's um, Aaron's on, Aaron Mushrush. Hi, Aaron. <laughs> is on, and then it's just um, Jackie to do the minutes. Okay. So he's on right now. Because I couldn't even see it, and I don't want to hmm. run over somebody again. All right. At that time, we said we're going to have to sit and discuss it. Um, we got some guidance from, uh, I guess, uh, where's my email? They wanted some stuff, some information from us about what we think 
is our vision and everything else. We got some guidance from, who sent that email? It's in here somewhere. Uh -huh. um, from what they were looking for. So here is what was sent to us. And I didn't catch the I just, remember I sent you all this thing about what they wanted for vision. And oh, goal. that's from that Leah was, yeah, was from, from WRA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was from WRA. All right, time for discussion. Where are we on this? What do you think? As I mentioned earlier, I, so we have a <laughs> comprehensive plan on our website, mm -hmm. which is not a comprehensive plan. <laughs> um, and then I was a little embarrassed because in the last meeting, she, she put some stuff on, up and said, this is a vision. And I'm going, a vision for more parking places? And, and it didn't make sense to me. So. I looked at that document and I made an attempt to rewrite it in a way that um, I thought was to get rid of some words and more focused on what we're doing. And I think that what, what I am on it is that one or two of us should probably get together and talk about that and say, here's what we think. Our, as an organization, we should have goals defined, I believe, that are, are our goals. And we come up with different ideas about what we should be doing as a bike committee. And I think that... Um, we should agree on what our goals are. And I made an attempt at revising that, and I sent it to Bob, and I got some copies of it, anybody wants to see it. But it's just my view, but I think that we should collaborate a little bit on getting that nailed down so that when we go into the meeting with those guys, mm -hmm. again, we can say, yeah, this is how we fit into the overall thing, and here's what our goals are. So I did some goals and um, a draft vision statement as well, just, but I didn't make copies. I did send it to Bob and Janet, but I didn't make copies. So I did some bullet pointed vision. Did anybody else put anything in writing? I did. Regarding, regarding strictly what WRI requested. Yeah. What I forwarded can we so what I thought, what I got from them is that I thought they wanted us to reiterate what our, what our purpose and goals are as a committee. I think they wanted us to draft um, what our vision and goals are that would mm -hmm. be incorporated into the master plan that when the master plan is endorsed by the community that those vision and goals would be incorporated into that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I look at it, Glenn, it's two separate things. The, the thing that, that the city has, the master plan that's been around since 2010, which nobody ever looks at, I remember at that meeting, uh, they were one of the people was saying, well, look at your master plan. And I had thought I made it relatively clear, and I even pulled out a copy of the document that he's talking about and saying, this hasn't been revised since 2010. It may not even be here in 90 days. Don't even worry about it. I believe that's what I said. And. So I look at this, that's, yeah, we have a project we have to do is take that, what you, that uh, why it was titled a master plan, I have no idea, you'd have to Com go back. Comprehensive plan. Well, Comprehensive, that's one thing, this is another. There are separate entities at the moment. If we want, and my recommendation regarding the committee comprehensive plan was to junk it and write a three or four paragraph charge for the committee. Why are we here, what are we to do? Uh, let's see, I think I've got a copy of that thing here waiting that I usually carry. I have one, I think, um, too. So it's pretty much meaningless. Well, it's not meaningless, but there's a lot of ancillary a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, and as well as if we want to have that discussion well, about thing. redoing this, here's the Lewis Bicycle Pedestrian Comprehensive Master Plan. There was purpose, uh, goals, and policy in that, yeah. in that document. Mm -hmm. And the woman referred to that document and said, oh, here, oh here's your plan, mm -hmm. right. and we'll, we'll incorporate Thank that. I, and I, I thought, think we can do I both just, at once. As I just said, I thought I did a pretty good job, maybe I didn't, of Thank explaining you. to her that this document was not worth yeah. her spending time Thanks. on. Okay. Is sure so yeah. I have, you know, I'm yeah, brand new to this committee. Graphs, so. I, I, yeah. I, I wonder, oh, okay. I mean, you're, you're um, Bobby, you're, you're talking about the, the charge of the committee. 
but what I thought I heard in the discussion with Del about the other day was much broader than the charge of this committee. It was trying to imagine and cut codify, if you will, I don't know, put down on paper and illustrate what we within the community, the city of Lewis, imagine, you know, things should look like relative to bikes and pedestrians. Um, that's a l maybe a lot bigger than the bike ped committee. Um, I, I thought that's what we were going to talk about. Um, so, I mean, I, you know, Mary, I'm just looking at, this is Mary, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't read it probably carefully enough, but scanning it when it came in, this is sort of the scale that I imagine, this, this vision statement, um, you know. Well, if I understand correctly, the idea is that this would really be relative to the master plan right. process, not, mm -hmm. not, the, not our charge mm -hmm. for Marin City Council right. yeah. of what we're supposed to be. So the comp plan, as I understand it, from, what is it, 10? 12, 20, some, 2010. Something, something is, at least in, in in my words, the charge to this committee yeah. of what are, what we're supposed to be doing. This is what are the goals for a master plan, a bicycle mass, bicycle and pedestrian master plan for the city of Lewis, and what we envision that to be. Um, so. What I did for this was in all the different examples that were sent out because um, the state of Delaware has the blueprint for bicycle safety. Newcastle County has a bicycle master, bike and ped master plan. Kent County has one and various different municipalities have them. Um, Dover, Milford, Rehoboth, Wilmington. There's a couple of others underway right now, Odessa Middletown. Um, even Western Sussex, and kind of looked at the, the highlights within each of those master plans because each of those master plans carry a vision and goals. And the goals don't really differ amongst all of them. They, the wording's a little bit different, but essentially, you know, it's, it's a network, it's safety, it's inclusion, it's, you know, it's all the same kind of buzzwords within it. So that's all I did on this was take what are stories that are pretty common amongst all bike plans and just put them all onto kind of a single piece of paper um, to maybe make it a little bit easier for us to, mm -hmm. to jump into it. The only thing we couldn't find was that report card when this committee submitted right. the um, to um, League of American Bicyclists for the Bronze Award. I guess you get feedback with that, a report card? Yeah, I'm not sure because <laughs> I've never done it. Mm -hmm. So I have to go, that was pre-me, so I've got to go back in the files and see what I can find. And I, I did not have time, Mary, to do that oh, today. Oh, no, I just yeah. wasn't. But no, I think that that would be helpful in this process. I went back looking through all the files I have I could not find the award itself. The I found the award, bronze yeah. award thing that I couldn't hear. What they sent us saying, yeah, you're bronze again. A lot of other stuff. Hmm. I found an old document of the section that I did for Don back in when it was 2020. No, it had to be 28. Um, hmm. If I if I, I take what you, what you what you, why you're bringing this up. Uh, as a bronze winner, there are opportunities for improvement if you want to move up the scale, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming there are specific criteria to help you get there. Yep. Um, I, you know, I was at a city council public hearing last night where I raised a similar assessment that was done by an outside party, and they provided feedback like that. And again, I see it as an opportunity to, you know, round out what we're doing. Um, I thought some of that stuff was online. Is it just the is it just the award? Do they don't have the detailed feedback? I went looking for it a while back. I'll go. I'll see if I can find. They it. list who it. you are, but we I've never seen that they would. I don't know that they would publish your yeah your we report card. That seems a little yeah. like they, I don't know that they would. Detailed do that. information. Yeah. And I came across something. Might have been from an old bronze or something about ways to jump to silver. 
you know, it's, it's in there when we find it, and it all exists. Yeah, it um, may not have anything that isn't in uh, something else anyway, so. I'll right. put on my investigative hat and it's in that box. <laughs> <laughs> up in the attic. <laughs> so I, I to hear what you guys are saying, and I mm -hmm. think yeah, getting input to these guys, to to the uh, planning group, is key. I think that we that as we uh, determine what the what what environment we like to see, I think that I think we can do both things at once. I guess is what I'm saying. I I've spent some time revising our comprehensive plan and James gave it a different name. I'll, ha I'll provide you guys what I did mm -hmm. and I'll look at what, what you did, Mary. And I think that it, it, I feel it, as an organization that we should have something that we ha that we can say, here's what we're doing and, and it's up to date. And the, the idea that it says, our, one of our goals is to provide more parking spaces in, um, in the Lewis just cut. I think it says reduce well. parking, cars. Doesn't it, or is it provide no. parking? I know it says reduce cars. Well, anyway, it doesn't. Right. It doesn't make sense to me. So, but uh, okay. Let, let's let's. Sure. We, we I guess now I understand better. We need to get something to the planning commission. What is what the environment that we want to promote and we see here in Lewis, right? I mean, in terms of our goals and vis vision, is that? A, that would I think if we want to modify and actually have a charge, I believe that would go to council, not the planning commission. The planners for the master plan are not looking for the comprehensive plan. Well, that may be true, but when she said, what are your goals, she pulled out our comprehensive plan. Because she thought plan. those were our goals. Okay, she but thought that shouldn't we have our goals document. defined? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and I think we're in agreement of that. And then the, where they live, I guess, is the other, is going to be the net where they're documented. So, so the actual goals will live in the master plan. Okay. That's not our charge for mayor and city council. So, so given the presentation that Terry presented, my sense is there are ramifications for how that plan works out, right? If we were to seek funding, the suggestion was made Apparently. that, you know, it would need to kind of fit within the plan. The plan so will be the implementation roadmap. They, it would need to fit within the plan as far as a priority is concerned. And I, I think the example that I'll give is to step aside from this committee for, but for just a sec is we're talking about also a Savannah Road master plan, right? When you have a plan, then it's easier to be able to get projects to come out of it. Do they look exactly like what might be in the plan? Not always, but you've identified them as priorities and things that the community want to change or happen within it. So I think that's why if there is a bicycle and pedestrian master plan and part of that plan, I would imagine, has a mid or long-term goal of safe crossing of the canal, then that's going to support any grant right. submissions that you do. You may not say how you're gonna do it, right. but you're gonna say as a community, we want it to be a short, mid, or long-term priority. So I think that's where in any grant submission, if you have a master plan that matches that, you go, higher up the list than somebody who doesn't. True. So, wh when is the next set, what's the next step with the plan, with the master plan development? Uh, we're well, what I recollect and what I was hoping we'd be able to do tonight but doesn't seem to be probable is my recollection when we walked out of the meeting on the 20th, each one of us would develop the goals and visions. And then my, I, my belief was we would send them individually and let WRI, whoever was gonna get them, look oh. at all five of our opinions and oh, sorry. Try, to come up with a, yeah. try to come up with what we really think. Oh, or, didn't know that. Well, well, that was my impression. Or apparently, are we supposed to come up with one unified one? Which oh, is, is not probable to happen tonight. 
So, so you know, looking li looking through some of those detailed plans that Mary just ran through, right. um, it was interesting. The like I, I looked at the Rehoboth plan first, just because it you know I know Rehoboth, and you know it started with a committee like ours, although that committee is larger, and then they brought in um, uh, a larger group of stakeholders. Which I thought was an interesting idea, but that may have been through the plan, the plan contractors. I don't, I didn't really follow what stage that was. What I, I read most of it. But, so but so my expectations. The way I, again, maybe I just didn't understand. I may have been asleep at the wheel that day. But I, I figured they're looking for our stuff so that they can sort of structure, structure things so that ultimately they can bring them back to the first public meeting whenever mm -hmm. that that mm -hmm. is the yeah. the first mm -hmm. workshop. Mm -hmm. It's just to get the ball rolling to set up, a, I would assume, a fairly high level structure. Uh, I mean, uh, how detailed does, do That's you think it needs to be? I don't know. Mine is not nearly as detailed yeah. as Mary's. I've got some bullet points of where my vision, what I think, and what I'd like to see for goals in five years and 10 years. But so so I, I think that my, my understanding from the special meeting with Del Dot and the consultants was they want to hear what this committee sees as a vision and goals. And I, I mean, that's how I interpreted, right? And I, I mean, I'll go back and listen to the meeting, but that's how I interpreted it, that it shouldn't be five individuals and then they're tasked okay. with trying to figure out what the committee wants, right? Because you've got five different opinions that the committee has to come to a, a consensus. And I think, I think Mary's outlined a lot of points and what I see are almost objectives here to meet those goals, right? So if the goal is improve the pedestrian and bicycle transportation network, then we have those goals of identifying gaps in the network. Um, what are the needs of the user groups of the network? And then those are the things that we hash out as objectives to meet that goal. Is that, is, am I reading mm -hmm. that correctly? Mm -hmm. So we can, if I take the, the topics, there are seven topics which would be identified as goals and that's what we could submit or you know, it, we can add to, we can um, cut some, but I think because this is a very rich document and it really drills down and I think that they want to see the goals. And that's, I, again, this is, comes off of a lot of the different right. plans. Right. But I think the, the, exactly what you're saying is the idea is to go to a public workshop and give them the overarching goals mm -hmm. and to have people, whether it's through dots or a survey or whatever it is, say, right. oh, you know, I'd really like to see that happen and that happen and that happen. And then how does that happen? Are your objectives underneath it? Right, so, right. So, yes, this is one step too far. <laughs> um, but... I don't think so. Uh, but it's a but it's a good it's a really thorough document. Or you could use it and you do the dots about what you think are priorities underneath right. of them as well. I don't know how they plan I, to do their I, work. I, think, I don't know how we can do this without having two or three people sit together and kind of look at a couple documents and try to come up with something that the committee would could then review. Um, and. You know, purpose, goal, vision, and goals are usually kind of high-level stuff. And then what you have, the key, the, the, the key to it is getting it implemented. So and you've identified a lot of to-dos, I think, or things, areas where the drill down. The drill down is key. So I think we can pass both to those to those guys. I mean, here's our the vision, the network. I mean, the the, the thing about you go, you walk out of your back. Your, your driveway and you ride your bike. I mean, that, that mm -hmm. somehow that should be in. Um, mm -hmm. So they want yeah. our vision and goal. Mm -hmm. and, well, and if we can give them more and say, here's some ways of getting that, some things they need to change, then that would be even better, I think. So what I think we need to do at this point is 
have everybody write down their vision and goals. Because we could sit here mm -hmm. forever bouncing stuff around, put all five documents in a pile, and then have somebody read them. You want a committee of two? Because, all right, yeah. I assumed, I had thought, I'm obviously in error, that WRI would, would do the compilation of five different documents. Well, we've only got two tonight, and you can copy mine and distribute it if you wish. Mine is far different. Mine is a bunch of bullet points. I, I'm the same. I have just bullet points. Oh, you've got one? Mary, Mary, okay. uh, yours um, is very thorough. Yeah, I think it's too it's far. It, 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 it is. is a lot. Yeah. One, one thing that I there noticed three. Yeah. when three I, when I stuff was up. looking on the, the, the websites, 124 pages, 122 pages, 131 pages, 115 pages. And it was like a lot of the blah, 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 and it was just way too much. I'm a, I'm a nuts and bolts, bullet point guy, boom, mm -hmm. here's what it is, boom, boom, boom. It's nice to have a vision, I, 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 yeah. and that's part of our master plan, mm -hmm. having a vision. But when you have 115 pages of stuff, it's, it's a lot. So but I'm, each of those documents has a goal. Oh, I understand. A single that. page yeah, and, and a vision, and I and think I, that's. So I, so I've got vision and goal. So no, this goes you, a step too far. <laughs> I get that. So no, so no, I'm not saying it's too far. It's very good. It's very thorough. Well, it's just. <laughs> well, so. we're talking about the master plan. Yeah. The comp plan is a different topic altogether. Yeah. Okay, but the goals, the vision and goal that I've identified are the same ones that I would provide them to the master plan. Say, here's what okay. we want to do. Right. Okay, and then the Cut policy, and the policy stuff is how, how it gets done, mm -hmm. here by this committee. That's the, that's yeah, the way. Which I would not be it. necessary. No, well that for yeah. the master plan. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, there are some details that might go. I, I put in a policy that uh, upgraded the policy to say that we should work with Deldot to make, enhance network connections. And I mean, as, as, as a group, I think we can do both at once. But I think we should focus on what we need to get to the, the, the master plan. planning committee. Mm -hmm. committee. Bob, so what would you like us to do? Uh, at this stage of the game, everyone that does not have a document to put into the pile, make one. Make one. <laughs> and we get all five of them together. Do we want to have a special meeting and read everybody else's and try to come up with a common plan? Or do we want to assign another working group? Or do we want to burden Janet with it? <laughs> I, I, as wonderful as Janet is, I don't think it's fair to burden her with that. I think it's something not. that we need to knock around. Um, but mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I, I can work with Mary's detailed page. I think feel like we can roll this up however we want. You know, I mean, the, the, when I look at this, this has got all the details. I mean, having worked on the Planning Commission, there are all sorts of things I would have liked to have had. One of the items in here has to deal with, you know, what, what we require in major subdivisions, for example. That's how I read that, that item. You know, the question I would have is, are there things missing, either from the bullets or from the headings of those groups of bullets that that, that that people feel. I mean, I, I can completely work with this list right here. I move that we that we set up a working committee with Mary and Sumner to take everybody else's <laughs> input and consolidate it into something that makes sense, and then pass it back to the committee for review. I'm happy to do that. Okay. And what's our timeline? They come back in May. Is that right? Okay. Um, so we, meet, well, we meet with them in June, right? Oh, was it June? I thought there was a meeting. The next meeting was June. When but is the next meeting? Um, Our next meeting, meeting is no, no, with with with, uh, right. with the working with the working group. Yeah, I, I think they wanted to do a public hearing workshop in okay. June. June. Oh, okay. That's we've got to get them information prior to that, so right. they can have a plan. We've okay. got to provide them information well prior to that. Right. Okay. So. Um, yeah, and I, I'll go back and check my notes um, from that meeting, but that was my recollection, was that it, the workshop 
would be sometime in June. Yeah. So there isn't a date yet. That's why I couldn't find it. I was like trying to figure out. No, no. I'll go back and check my notes. Just bullet pointed items. Perfect. We'll take that. Do you want me to make copies of that for? You can make all the copies of mine. Sure, I can scan them and send them to you. Okay. And send them to you too. Do you want? Yeah. I'll yeah. I'll just. I just was comparing what some of the things on Mary's and what I had written down. And she puts it in one way, and I put it in another way. Right. Like gaps in a network, <coughs> I specifically say crossing the canal yeah. and mm -hmm. bike lanes on all main, main city roads. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think they're just the, the same, same line. The yeah. same yeah. idea. Just different words. I think right. that's something that the I small talk, roads I, is. You should be able to get from A to B in, a, in most cases in a low stress situation, whether mm -hmm. it turns out to be bike lanes or, or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. So okay. I, I just have different wording on there. The one, the one thing that I do put on there is about working with DelDOT because they are, hopefully they're going to be with us, but they have not done much for bicycle safety in, with the roads that we have. And I think it's vital. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, to me, they, they've held us back for promoting bicycle safety. Okay. I thought I heard Jennifer Sinelli indicating a different... Way. Can I give you that back? Well, I doubt oh, seriously sure. she would agree with that. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so we will have to determine when and how we are going to compile this. We're already going to have to have a special meeting for the maps. Perhaps we could combine this and the maps in time to get whatever we, the document we end up coming out of this with to WRI, I guess they're the ones that are the, they are the WRA, excuse me, they're the ones that sent the guidance uh, in time for them to work it up for the June meeting, which probably means we've got a couple, three weeks maybe. So maybe we could have our job done by the end of April. No, I was thinking we got a couple, three weeks to get stuff ready to get sent to them because they're gonna have to figure out what to do with it for an early June meeting. So what do you think, what, Bob? What, you I'm thinking two, three weeks, but so okay. that's just me. Yeah. So okay. um, if it takes longer, it takes longer. I mean, we can't. We, uh, the oh, document well. that we would provide to them, I think, to vision and goal, goal, mm -hmm. vision, and then some something what you've gotten is uh, like opportunities okay there's like strength, you know, there's strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats analysis that people do. If we can provide opportunities, to fix things, and that's a, and that's the second la that's the layer down. There. You've got to identify a lot of those things, I think, in, in yours. Well, we'll come up with a draft and if you, uh, send it right, right, in a right. couple it weeks. Becomes yeah. a uh, yep. straw that you guys can kick around, yeah. and then we can right. reshape and hang things Turn off of, or roll up, or whatever. I think. Right. Yeah, so okay. on that score, there's a motion. Cross the bridge the with it. <laughs> And can, can I throw one other thing in? I looked at our website stuff, and mm -hmm. the bicycle safety page had a couple, a typo on it, and a suggestion okay. I'd like to make a change. Can I just provide that to you, J Yeah, J yeah, J yeah, that's okay. fine. No, um, I, and Mary and Blue and I um, sat down, what, about a month ago, Mary? Mm -hmm. um, and talked about some changes that need to be up. We did get a picture of the corral, the bike corral, up on there. Um, and some other changes, but um, I will have Blue make these um, changes for tomorrow when she's in. But she hasn't done the design of the new pages N yet. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She got she got um, unloaded on on a couple of. <laughs> so no worries. We're, no worries. we're chipping away, chipping away. Okay. Bob, you're cruising. You're almost there. Mm -hmm. You're cruising. You're almost there. So, does anybody want to second the motion? If we have a parliamentary oh, motion. Right. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so that's how that's going to deal with them. Oh, that, that was on the work group? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sorry. Was, I missed that. The we're going to compile. To take what I was writing got. my to do notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. All right, only last thing we got to talk about is increasing usage of the bike parking at the bike corral. 
which basically means signage. I think we beat that, to, came to that conclusion pretty much last time. The corral's the thing on the other side of yeah. the it's intersection the up here? Of the bridge. Oh, yeah, South side right. foot of the bridge. <coughs> There's um, a, the Kindle. Yeah, I'm not sure we ended up with signage, though, because yeah. we agreed we didn't want more sign pollution. There's one right. sign where we could have. There's that little tiny road where the kids at Kindle, they say no parking here, no bike parking. Mm -hmm. There's a place, um, what is it, Kindle or? Oh, that's Nectar. Puts Nectar. They have a sign. That sign, we should give them a, a sign to replace that and say no parking here, pike at the park at the bike corral, because it's mm -hmm. already a sign that's there. And that would be useful, I think. Well, Les Leslie's just trying to. Excuse me, that's not Leslie. That's uh, their mother. Anyway, they're just trying to keep bikes from beating their windows in. Uh, I understand. It's fair. So Isla Farrell has lost one or two windows so over the years to bicycle handlebars, but that's across the street. I know Mary knows what I'm talking about. I can't remember the name of the contractor. There was somebody that was going to be doing wayfinding and all of that for the city. I remember a meeting maybe Hers. a year or two ago. Where is that? Because, it, I mean, the concept of the it's not fun visual it. pollution and so on. I mean, it's a real issue around here. Yeah. For example, there's a no turn on right uh, sign up here on Pilot Town Road to turn on Savannah Road. People don't see it. They avoid it. They blow it off. I don't know what, but you know, nobody sees it. We have a lot of different signs. They they end up interfering with each other, front to back. You know, um, I, I, I don't I don't want to put more signs out there until we figure out what we're doing. Um, but you said it's not funded. Explain that. When, when, when are we going to know what we're doing? Well, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Okay. I mean, is the city, is it all dead? Is the merge or whatever it is? Khalil. Yep. Am I correct that at some point, and I'm not going to do a good job of this, but at some point, um, Mayor and City Council did not really have an appetite for the wayfinding, moving to the next step of the wayfinding project that was done as far as funding it and things like that right now? So that was, that was a couple, that was, a, that was kind of right before I got on council, I remember that, that that project was going, but I do remember there was concern, not so much about the funding, but about what was being raised as sign clutter. Uh, that was something that was coming from some people in town and others, and I think that may have kind of put that on pause or maybe hit that, but it wasn't a cost issue. Okay. I yeah, I remember that but well. It, but isn't, isn't I thought that I heard cost? something like there wasn't an appetite for it. And I think I that's what it, I, yeah. I, I but is it at your cost? Maybe mm -hmm. I misunderstood. I went to one of the early meetings of that. The whole point of it seemed to me was to reduce the sign clutter and create sort of a, a standard look and feel that everybody could understand that everything was, so was, it was there. So it was done, it started in 2000, maybe 17, 18, something like that. It was done as a part of the entire Route 1 South Corridor. That study exists. Lewis enhanced it and did the city of Lewis. Rehoboth did it. Rehoboth is the only municipality, to the best of my knowledge, down here that instituted it. That's the yeah. orange and white signs that you see mm -hmm. in Rehoboth. So Lewis did the entire kind of wayfinding plan. There were public workshops and meetings right. and things like that. So it was completed as far as what those signs would look like. But they're still not here. But it was never yeah. taken to the next step because I think as a part of that, you have to say what's going to go away right. in order for this wayfinding right. to But I come think in. Sumner is correct. But I, Jen, I don't know if you recall any of this because it was kind of right when I got up. There was the plan was all the work had been done right. mm -hmm. and it was ready to be implemented and it just kind of got lost. And But I remember people complaining about sign clutter and I don't know right. if that spooked some of the people. And, and I don't know if it was. I, I can't recall if it was a funding issue. I don't remember that being it. That, no. That, that was one of the issues that was brought up because it was really? well over $100,000. Really? I, I know that was a stumbling block. That was? Okay. I just. I'm not saying I, that was the final yeah, I just, nail in the coffin, but that was a stumbling block when it was discovered how much it was going to cost. 
I think we may be overthinking this, maybe going a little bit too global over a handful of signs about how to get to the bike corral and worrying about the Route 1 project. Um, it, we've been asked by council and the former mayor to try to get more utilization out of the bike corral. I don't think we have the answer. Well, that may be the case. Uh, we've talked about it a couple times, and what do we do? I, signs, I, signs. I, again, we. I, we I, th to, I think uh, you're trying. I think, in trying to change behavior, signs aren't going to change behavior, and people come off the trail. They're going to Second Street to a restaurant or a shop, and they want to get off their bike and be there. Mm -hmm. The bike corral is not that far away. But for many people, it's inconvenient. You got to cross a busy you, intersection, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I think, it, I think we have to be creative, not just think about signs, but be creative in what else we can do to get attention to that. And it might be putting it on the map. It might be. You know, we put a picture of it up on, on the Bike Ped Committee website. So the picture is one thing, but we need to have more verbiage with it, you know. So what if you did bike to work day and you started at the corral? What if you did mm. you ask Lewis Bike Shop to start their nightly rides from the corral? What if we started to do things that raised awareness for the corral, right. not just mm -hmm. by putting signs up, but maybe by driving people to it in some way. I don't know. I, I like that. That's creative. Yeah. I like that. Good idea. Well, I, I think the bike, putting bike, other bike racks around the city is going to be what we, is going to meet our, what I would envision environment we want for Lewis better than to force you know say here go to here's a place you got to use this or please use it you know I, I just don't uh, changing the behavior to that I mean people want a convenient place to go park their bike where to where they're going and that's what I'd like to see us focus on but I still think at Nectar's they can put a sign there use the bike well, they already have a sign we're going to get you a sharpie <laughs> yeah. to be perfectly honest with you I think we hit our max there. I think in the downtown area we're. Yeah. I so I, I to think see it. I, in the Cape Gazette complaining about taking away a parking spot. Right. So I I, I, I kind of like Mary's creativity and. Yeah. I, I think that's I think that's great too. But the simple thing again, the kiosk is there, and use that. I mean, big bold letters. Mm -hmm. Downtown bike parking, parking here. Mm -hmm. and just in that, we have the kiosk right there. Mm -hmm. Right now it has a faded map that you can barely read right. any longer. Right. And use, use that as one tool. Mary's got a great idea. And just to talk about downtown bike parking, I have a vision that there's going to be a heck of a lot more downtown bike parking in part of our, my master plan. Chip, I don't think we've talked about the details, but I have a feeling you and I are aligning on that ground. I, 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 you may want to kick me off now. I, I, <laughs> I don't see us succeeding with a number of the goals that are on this sheet, a number of the goals that typically end up in the bike master plans that were in that list that we got from the contractor without doing a lot harder work on making bike parking available in a broader set of places that people will use. If they won't use it, it doesn't matter how many racks you have out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the culture. You want to change the culture right. to people walking and biking. Right. Mm -hmm. And you make it by convenient and fun and safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. so it seems to me we're not going to make any progress on <laughs> what to do about the bike corral. <laughs> Nobody has made any progress with what to do about the bike corral since it was invented. I think Chip's suggestion yeah. is good. It, 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 
is good for us. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're going to do a sign, no. th that's the place for it. Saying there. Yeah. Just, just, just make one it more visible. That, uh, just make it pop. Blinking light. If someone from public mm -hmm. art wants to do something really nice and put it in there. So are you talking about a place for art there? Because the way the Great kiosk visible. sits, An you, art, you art can't. Sign. If you put it in the kiosk, you can't see it until you are riding by it because the kiosk faces the road. I know it does. So are you talking about putting a sign on the post? So when people are coming down Gill's Neck, they see the sign there. Well, that would be great also. Okay. Yeah. Can we ask the art committee to uh, charter a sign that says the park at the corral, a piece of art? It makes people do that. Well. Well, somebody from the committee could experience. make a pitch at the next public well, an art meeting. An experience goes back to, what, three, four years ago, right. Chip? Mm -hmm. uh, we were going to put a bike rack behind the stores on 2nd Street, right. over off 3rd Street. Right. And the last we ever heard of that is the design for the bike rack went to the public art committee, mm -hmm. along with the possibility of a sign to get people to walk up next to M&T mm -hmm. Bank. That's the last we ever heard of it. So uh, a, a better program. suggestion, or maybe maybe we could do something like approach the art student, well, shit, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Capes, I'm sorry, uh, this meeting has been recorded. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Believe me, most people that know me have heard me say that before. It's nothing new. Um, approach the art department at Cape High School or something, see if they want to have kids make up a plan, make it a project, but they're going to be out of school in a month or two anyway. I'm, I'm willing to reach out to the Public Art Committee. Um, I, I, would I, I, think that, I think that you will find that the responsiveness of the Public Art Committee is very different than what it had been. I um, and I know he Heidi Lowe had a fabulous idea of taking like a silhouette of the downtown <laughs> skyline for lack of a better word, but like Lowe's. taking a taking a, a, a you know, the storefronts and making them kind of bike racks and um, so I think if this committee were to go to a public art meeting or representatives of the committee and resurrect that, you might very well be met with a, a different response. Yeah, just paint them all different colors. So Is there? Um, their their regular meetings are the last, the fourth Wednesday of the month. However, in April. They had to move it back, so they're meeting, um, wait a minute. I think it's, I think they're meeting May 3rd, but I can confirm that with you all. I would volunteer to go to that meeting if somewhere you want to join me and, 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 and make, a make a request and it's how we can integrate what we're doing. <coughs> they can help create a bike environment. Good. I, yeah. I would think it's your vision. I, I cannot make the third for sure. <laughs> okay. For sure. Okay. So you want to talk for I mean, it's, Sumner, I'm happy if you do it too. I just so, think one of us. So I, I guess the one worry I have mm -hmm. is, you know, you can come up with all these really great ideas, but will we be able to afford period whatever we work up? Because that's a very different animal than what, you know, we just passed with the wooden thing. Right. Well, I think... I, so obviously there has has to be discussions, right? So I think the, the, the budget's going to depend on what the ideas are. I can't say right now that we're, our hands are tied or we have open purse strings, right? So, cause, so I would need to know. So um, but if it's not something that could be done in this budget year, then we get the plan, we get the cost estimate, and we put it in for next year. But it would be interesting to have that group of creative folks, mm -hmm. even if it wasn't art. If the, if the answer isn't, we're putting a piece of art in here, we have this corral that we're trying to draw attention mm -hmm. to and get people to go there. 
What creative ideas do they have? So I, I think you'll get a lot of creative ideas. Um, so I think then that, because we've, we've gone from what was on the agenda is action on, you know, bike corral usage and signage. So what I would suggest is making a motion to go to the public art committee and query them on what their vision would be that would be attractive to people, grab their attention, and then in that discussion you can fold in the bike rack, but for purposes here. I would not fold in the bike rack. Well, I, you know, it came, it, it came up. You, you just brought it up. There's so I'm giving, but I'm giving you an opportunity to it revisit with, re, just a second, revisit that with a new committee. Uh, given so if you want to, you can, right. but at least you could take this to the public art committee. The, the challenge of getting people to the crowd. Mm -hmm. When you say the bike rack, which I'm not sure what you meant by that. The bike rack that Bob just brought up that was previously taken to public art. And never never came back out okay. <laughs> for years. I second so. your very long emo motion that uh, we so go to you the... Need to you have, have to rephrase. You have to, you have to, you have to phrase have it. a motion on the table from a member. Oh, okay. I make a and motion. the chair can't make motions. Okay. I make a motion that we designate a member of this committee or to to go to the bike to go to the art committee and request their help in creating some visual attraction at the corral to get people to park their bikes there. That's that's it. That looks that fits our community. Okay. Second. <laughs> do we have a second? I second that. Do we have discussion? Who's going to do it? Chip. Chip can't do it on the third. No. Uh, I well, can talk to you about what we, I should say to them, or I'll go with you. Just go Let's go together. You two guys volunteer. Okay. Okay. Cool. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Our next meeting will be. I have one quick update before we go to we adjourn. I did learn from Anne Marie just now that the on the wayfinding issue. Oh. Um, it was mostly cost. And that, and it was 157,000 just for the first phase. However, the Savannah Road master plan that is being developed now is probably going to bring it back uh, to the forefront and for more consideration. But uh, is that is that through Deldot then that's doing uh, that? Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Deldot master plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Very good. Thank so you. So they should know yeah. about the Lewis master plan being developed. Twenty. No, I can't remember here on my notes. Next meeting, 23 May. That is um, the meeting um, for which? Sorry? For That's our, that is our next scheduled, oh. regular scheduled meeting. We will have a special meeting as necessary for the two issues that we've left open tonight. Okay. All right. I'm not even going to call for a motion. <laughs> I'm going to use my little hammer. We're Glenn, Glenn and um, Sumner, I will verify via email that that meeting is May 3rd at 5.30 at the Rollins Center. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank you. Quick question. For a public meeting, anybody can go that they want. We oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. We do not have FOIA restrictions. No, right. anybody can go. 5.30, no, May 3rd at the Rollins Center. Yeah, and I'll, I'll send a confirmation so email to thank you. Thank you. Mary, Let me just thank shut. You. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, oh, reach out. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh. You had a tough Re job today. Hmm? You had a tough job today. You missed it. Well. 